Hey YouTube, um, I've been asked quite frequently why I homeschool my 14 year old son Joe and uh, I'm going to get into that but first I want to talk about many reasons of why a parent would want to homeschool their children. Um, one reason could be to get a good education that you can't get in a public venue where you live. Uh, another reason may be to steer your kid out of getting in trouble. Uh, another reason may be you don't want your kid learning the liberal trash in your school system that may be in your school system. There's a whole host of reasons why uh, folks homeschool their children. Um, in a way, that's why I homeschool Joe. But uh, here's the real nitty gritty of why I homeschool my son. Um, my son is a 14 year old super tough one bad dude uh, I homeschool him because uh, if a little boy comes up to him and starts trying to a teenage boy comes up to him and wants to date him or kiss all over him or hug all over him, uh, they're going to get their lights punched out. Simple process. He's not going to think about it. He's going to go dead on on this, on this kid. Uh, another reason would be troublemaking kids. Um, for example, if Joe sees another teenager bullying kids, uh, he's going to go dead on them as well. And it ain't going to end well. Another reason may be uh, a kid coming up to him and trying to steer him over in left field. And they're going to get their damn lights punched out just as quick. Uh, you see, Joe spends three to four and a half hours some days training in boxing. And he's a very serious kid. Uh, around here, we call him super bad. And we just put a video up with just a little bit of his training. Nothing harsh, but uh, because we're very, we try to be as secretive as we can about what we do. Uh, we're just letting little snippets out here and there. But uh, if you've got a kid that is a tough, good, honest, forthright teenager that is developing into a good young man. You don't want them in uh, in a public school system. And you probably don't want them in a private school system. Uh, Joe is being educated through a private academy uh, through online means here at home uh, from a prestigious academy in uh, Florida and he's getting a great excellent education he's a straight A student uh, he doesn't have to worry about a bunch of chaos going on in the classroom uh, we his mother and I don't have to worry about him beating the living hell out of a troublemaking kid or uh, somebody trying to ram uh, homosexual things down his throat uh, to drugs to the whole host of and gambit of what's going on in public schools so really when it really boils down to it for the protection of those kids in public school uh, for their protection is why I don't have my kid sitting in, inside of a public school classroom 
And as long as I can achieve that, I won't do it. Uh, we had him in a private school, but we were dealing with uh, same types of issues, goody two-shoes uh, teenagers, uh, delinquent in a different way than teenagers that come from homes that don't have anything, see? There's two sides to that spectrum. You got some kids down here that maybe don't have anything. And when I say rich kid, poor kid, or privileged kid, non-privileged kid, it's not every kid. Uh, it's not every kid at all. Uh, I grew up in a very, very uh, humble environment. My dad worked uh, and was extremely well off, but died very young and died unprepared. Uh, due to a very quick and sudden illness and we were put in a bad jam and my mom was absent for the first three years after he died uh, because she was getting up at five o'clock in the morning or earlier 4 30 sometimes uh, to be at a truck stop on the other end of the county where she was a waitress to truckers uh, she would get to work at uh, 6 o'clock and four days a week she would she would go in at 6 o'clock and get off at 12 o'clock at night. Four days a week, folks. But she was working six and seven days a week, single shifts, six and seven days a week, every week. But it, most of the time, four of those days she was pulling double shifts and we struggled and we struggled so I'm not focusing in on rich or poor but I'm going to tell you some aspects of it uh, you may have a be in a public school and maybe you got street kids I don't know if another way to tell it they got a home but they're on, they get on the streets and make trouble and they come in the classroom and make trouble. I don't want these boys to uh, go to school and get beat so bad that the ambulance is going to have to come to the school and pick them up. That's why Joe's not in, in the public school. We, I put him in a private school, two different ones. Uh, one of them was a military school. And uh, you had privileged delinquents in there they just thought they could do anything they wanted because mom and dad had money uh, I don't want him in those schools because I don't want uh, an ambulance to be coming to pick their kids up and take them to a hospital so your reasons for homeschooling may be a little bit different than mine uh, the conservative trash at this point Joe's old enough he's well aware enough He's got a good firm foundation in the King of Kings himself. And uh, I'm not worried about this world immorally overtaking him. But what I do worry about, and I worry about where I live in the neighborhood uh, where we are. Uh, we've moved around quite frequently. And Joe immediately, uh, with the kids in the in the neighborhood establishes quick and swift dominance and uh, protects the other smaller kids in the neighborhood and God bless this kid for that. It ain't going to be no bullying going on with no kids up where he's around. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. And he, that would be the thing. It's not out here picking fights, but that's, a, that's the thing that will get him to fight at the drop of a hat uh, very quickly um, so we've got different reasons of why I have him schooled at home uh, and it's worked out very well for us uh, we are able to schedule things if we've got something that we've got to do or something comes up uh, We've went to uh, several boxing tournaments and uh, we were able to fit all that in. 
and not skip a beat, even with a well, a little bit of time lost in, in travel. But uh, as soon as we get from point A to point B and we're there, uh, we, he don't he don't skip a beat. So that's another good thing about it. Uh, the other good thing about it is the calmness about it. He just sits, does what he's told. Uh, I do watch over him. I do make sure that what he's doing is good and correct. Uh, helped him several times in in uh, in higher mathematics, but even though I'm university educated, he's well beyond me at this point or anything I ever learned, so I can't help him with that. But been able to help him with some history and uh, sciences and stuff still, but I don't know how long or that's going to hold out. Uh, he's well beyond me. And that's a good thing, and that's what you should strive for as a parent. But uh, I just wanted to, uh, I know some homeschooling parents will be watching this, and if you are sitting back and on pins and needles for the same reason I have been uh, with Joe in a public or a private school, uh, go ahead and consider some homeschooling. Uh, there are wonderful programs out there. There are free programs within the state that you live. Uh, there's international programs. Uh, there's programs if, you, if you've got some money that you can, uh, like we've been blessed to ha at least have enough money to have him at the academy that uh, he's getting schooled from. Uh, and there's just a whole host and variety of things out there uh, from a Christian perspective to uh, just a whole host of things that uh, you can get and you can do. And I, I would suggest him, uh, I never would have suggested homeschooling uh, back when I was a kid. We didn't, I never heard homeschooling. That was never mentioned. A kid maybe would break his arm or have a bad surgery and maybe they schooled at home uh, by getting work sent to their house and taken back uh, while they were recuperating or something. But beyond that, we never had that. But in this society today, if you can at all do it, uh, you should do it. Uh, sending your child to a public school system, you can be assured of several things. Uh, that he will learn how he will, will learn immoral sexual practices. Uh, it will be drilled down his throat. He will be told how bad of a person he or she is if they disagree with that. Uh, in other words, they will be discriminated against if they are a decent kid. Uh, the other thing you have to worry about is uh, drugs. And uh, even if you can keep your kid morally protected from those two things, they're going to constantly hear a filthy mouth. Uh, and basically, uh, everything bad that you wouldn't want to instill in your kid, they're going to be around for six or eight hours a day. Now, why would you do that? Uh, when I was younger, uh, many decades ago, I try not to give my age away here, uh, nervous about doing that online, but I can assure you I'm getting old, and uh, you should be able to tell by looking at me, you know, I'm not a spring chicken, but, uh, when I was in school, you know, it was a different show. And today you can't even stand up and express an opinion for belief in God or country or decency or moralness. And if you can at all help it, you don't want your children around this trash. Uh, trust me on that. I've seen many a kid go south. And I also I help kids out. Uh, I train uh, whatever kids can can go through it and get through my little 
thing that I require. Uh, I train them to box and uh, build themselves up and build their character up, straighten them out, get them off the streets uh, with a grand amount of discipline. Uh, so I, I see daily uh, a lot of what's going on with a lot of these kids. And uh, again, if you can at all get your kid out of a public school, get them out. Secondarily, uh, if you got a kid in a private school and they're dealing with a whole host of issues, just get them out. Uh, now, some would say, well, why would you do that? You're shielding them from what they're going to face in the real world. No, that's not it. Uh, looking at it from an educated standpoint and looking at it from a athletic type or military type of standpoint, uh, you've got a man in boot camp. You've got him sealed up. Uh, he's away from all these outside influences. Everything's ran with an iron fist. Uh, if there are troublemakers there, uh, they are brought into line quite quickly, or in today's world, they're sent home. Uh, so they are in a sheltered environment and strengthened and built up. Then they go into battle, you see. They are strengthened, built up, educated, and trained in the art of war. Then they go into battle. And there's no need for the loser-type attitude that these public officials give you that you're in other people that are just suffering from ignorance would give you that you're just sheltering your kid up. Don't buy in, into that mess. Uh, shelter your kid up. Strengthen your kid. Get armor on your kid before they go out there. Or your kid may not make it outside of your house to get to that age to even get out there and make a go of it or try to make a go of it. So that's my advice to negativity back with, uh, with concerns to aspects that I hear from folks like that. Uh, you always got one that says, oh, no. They're not going to be able to face the real world. But I would tell them it's that type of attitude that is puts the, the, the child or children at more risk from being able to face the cruelness and evilness of this world. So uh, I totally flipped the script on that. And, uh, all the science in the world, all the psychology in the world, proves me right on that and would prove that fella talking about sheltering that kid wrong. So, uh, but if you've got your kid at home and you're homeschooling your kid, you have to be aware, adult enough, and discipline your child enough to have good concrete structure and be teaching your child good concrete moral values from which to stand on. And that's what's wrong with this world today. You send your kid out to a public school system, even private schools, and they get sent out and they're standing on quicksand. If they even make it out, if they even graduate and get into the, uh, move on to higher education or get into the workforce or whatever they're going to do. So, food for thought. Uh, a lot of rambling from an old man, but that is why I homeschool my son and will continue to do so.